Hello everyone, RockAP here. This is my guide for beginners in helping you increase your damage per second cheaply for space combat. I originally used this method on my friends to get them from 2000 damage per second to anything from 10,000 to 20,000, so you can hold your own in advanced. And this is before you even hit a level 60. It doesn't sound like much when you look on the internet and see people doing 100,000 or whatever, but those players are generally guys who've been on this game for a while and have all the possible resources completed, such as the reputation vendors to tier 5. First off, we're going to have to discuss classes. In space, it doesn't really matter which class you pick. On paper, you'll read that tactical is considered the best at damage, while engineering is usually good for tanking and healing, and science is good for crowd control and healing. The important thing to know, end game, is that there is no need for healers, as everyone can self-heal, everyone can damage, and any ship can be used to tank if set up right. So next, let's look at our ship. I'm using the free tier 5 ship given to my tactical Romulan at level 40. As you can see, I have a random assortment of weapons and items since all I've really done is try to get to level 60 without thinking about sets or gearing up for end game. An experienced player will tell you it's definitely important to have all the same weapon type as your first priority. You can see what I've got here. I got a plasma beam bank, anti-proton beam bank, transphasic torpedo, photon torpedo, and three different types of 360 degree turrets on the back. With the way weapons work, each time they are used, they will drain weapon subsystem power from your ship. If you use multiple types of weapons, they'll add a penalty increasing the cooldown on when they can fire again. If we change the system power setup before we continue, you need to click in the bottom left corner next to your ship's health. There's three squares. Click that and switch it to number three. This gives you the best access to your subsystems. You want to drag weapons so you are always on maximum power for weapons and you want to lock it just so you don't accidentally click it off. If you're using science wizardry such as gravity wells, you'll want to boost your auxiliary as well. Boosting defense and speed aren't so important. Defense helps with your shield regeneration and speed just helps with your obviously speed. But end game is not about how much damage you can take, but how quickly you can kill. So it's always best to go with full weapon power, but it is up to you in the end. So back on topic, I want to get each weapon to be the same to maximize their uptime. The easiest way to do this is through completing missions. If you repeat the same mission over and over, you can get the same reward. You can get really good rewards by doing the missions in the Future Proof storyline. I don't know if it's available on console, but alternatively, we are going to actually be buying and crafting what we need. Hopefully you followed my previous video and I have a couple of million in the bank. For this build I'm going to replace all my weapons with beam arrays as it's the most common setup you'll come across. You could also pick beam banks, dual cannons or torpedoes. If you head to the exchange and look up beam arrays. First I'm going to look up ultra rare beam arrays. These are going pretty cheap. I want a full set of anti-proton if I was to pick ultra rare because they seem to be going the cheapest or disruptor. The pen mod is the most sought after mod as it will allow you to deal damage through the enemy's shields directly to their hull. There's a high chance you won't find higher rank pen mods at this sort of price so it can be a good idea to upgrade directly but it can get quite expensive on dilithium doing it this way. Alternatively, we're going to look at Beam Array Mark 12s under Very Rare, so there's no upgrading involved. As you can see, Polaron, Plasma and Tetrion are the cheapest weapons. From those, you can pick any of your choice. I'm going to go with Plasma. As I said, I'm looking for the Pen Mod. If I can't see any Pen Mod, the next thing you want to go for is CRTD to increase your critical damage or CRTH to increase your critical damage chance. So I've got the guns, next I have to have some decent tactical consoles. These can be crafted and upgraded, but I'm going to just buy them, provided that they aren't too expensive. I'm after plasma infusers, as they will specifically increase plasma weapons. I could also go with a general beam tactical console, 
but they provide less of a damage increase. I went with only Mark 10 on these as they were the cheapest option for me, but it is also incredibly easy to achieve Mark 10 through upgrades. The rest of your gear isn't important at this moment, but the only big money spender I would recommend on any energy weapon build is the Plasmonic Leech. They're currently going for under 10 million these days. So again, only get it if you can afford it, but when you can, that is your first purchase. First big money purchase. Also, buy some weapons batteries from a consumable vendor. They'll increase your damage you're able to do. Now that your ship is sorted, let's look at skills. As you can see, I've gone down the route of tactical, focusing mainly on energy weapons. The only real skills you want from the other two would be anything that increases your subsystem power, and also in the science section, long range targeting sensors. There's a damage penalty for attacking enemies at longer distances, so these three points will pretty much cancel out that penalty. Trait-wise, you're going to be wanting to look at anything that increases your crit and critical severity or increases your general damage. There are a couple of different decent skills such as Fleet Coordinator and Innocuous, but a lot of the sought-after traits are sold in the exchange for a lot of cash, so we're going to ignore those. Let's look at my officer skills. You can see from here I've got two tactical officers, two engineers and a science officer. I want to have a tactical team in there to help with my defences, as well as attack pattern beta and omega, as they're the best attack patterns in the game. I also want to have fire at will. I chose to have beam ray fire at will 2 and 3 in case they can overlap each other during cooldowns, as these will be your main source of damage. For engineering, I like to have self heals and emergency power to weapons. So I pick Engineering Team and Emergency Power to Weapons 2, which is very useful that as soon as you've come out of full impulse, it will allow your weapon subsystem to recharge quicker. When it comes to science, I do love gravity wells, but for this character I decided to go with Hazard Emitters. They'll stop any damage over time, allowing you to access objectives, and I like Science Team for the extra shield heal. Next. We will beam to our ship to organise our skills layout. This is all personal preference, but I would place any skills you plan to use constantly on your first bar, skills with longer cooldowns on your middle bar, and your last stand buttons such as fleet support onto your top bar. Also things are made easier if you set your weapons to auto attack by right clicking them all, allowing them to attack all at once when you're in battle. I tend to keep them away from my hotbar by using my spacebar to fire everything. It just looks neater. Finally, we need to test this baby out. I would use a standard method of using an instance commonly known as ISA, but every time I go to play it, it's with people who have no idea what they're doing. So I decided I will just show you a basic rotation using Starbase 24. So first, press space to hit everything. You want to be fighting on your broadside. You can use your fire at will. You can use your different buffs. I can, you can see how quickly everything dies. Keep using your patterns, keep everyone on broadside so you can constantly get hits in. 
and you still do fine. Use tactical team if you start getting attacked. And your other heals for emergencies. But the main focus is keeping fire at will active during a combat situation. I've just used full impulse, so now I'm going to use emergency power to weapons. Like I said, fire at will will allow me to fire more rapidly towards the enemy. Attack weapon beta means enemies will receive extra damage when I get when I shoot at them. As you might be able to tell from watching me fight just now, I am satisfied with my current level of damage, especially after picking up all my items cheaply. The next step for me is to work towards reputation vendors, my fleet goals, and work on my R&D. In terms of reputation, you want to work on getting your Iconian to tier 5, which will give you the best 4-piece kit for your ship. It gives you a good Deflector, Impulse, Singularity and Shield, considered the best for beams in the game. Work on your Terran Task Force, as at Tier 5 you get a very powerful beam array, considered possibly the best beam array in the game. Another long term goal is getting Fleet Science and Tactical Consoles, as they are considered the best in slot as well. So that's it from me. Hopefully this video hasn't been too long, I do hope it has been informative. I want to thank everyone for watching, if you'd like to subscribe it would make my day. I usually post videos of co-op games and some handy tip videos like this every once in a while, so please check it out. Live long and prosper!